a large model showman's engine part 11 looking at the electrical circuits and repairing a meter plus some very nice things arrive in the post in this clip I've made a special tool to clean the commutator on the dynamo all it is is a small piece of scotch bright taped to a stick using masking tape all I had to do was run the engine on compressed air and just touch this on the commutator and it cleaned it up this is a box of springs because I need a new spring for one of the switches because you can see that the original spring has just been slightly overstretched the three switches on the electrical control panel have springs like this as you open the switches and pull them away from the electrodes even if you pull the switches open slowly which is not a good thing because it can cause sparking but with this spring system that doesn't happen because you pull the switch open and it's a small spring that eventually pulls the contact out of the slot a very simple but useful principle in this clip you can see the new spring fitted to the switch at the right hand side there is a problem with the meter at the right hand side as well the glass of the meter is very loose at first i thought it was cracked but no luckily it's not time to take off the control panel so i can remove the meter and repair it and here is a reverse view of the meter that is damaged most of the crimp connectors look okay apart from one which needs replacing the meter is bolted to the paxilin plate using three bolts which are removed and now here is the meter on the bench on a cloth after i removed another three countersunk bolts from around the perimeter the cover lifted off the mechanism and you can see what the problem is the glass has become unglued and is floating about in the housing i cleaned up both the face of the meter and the glass using methylated spirits i've been very careful not to cut myself because the edges of this glass are quite sharp i'm removing the old adhesive it was very tenacious stuff and in the end i removed it using a stanley knife blade i really don't know what this adhesive is it's not soft at all it's very hard and brittle so it has to go in this clip i'm showing the glass once i removed the adhesive progress so far i've cleaned the housing and the piece of glass as well as the face of the mechanism using methylated spirits time to stick the glass back in position in the housing my adhesive of choice for this job is jb weld which is a two-pack epoxy resin mix and it's very strong as you've just seen i mixed a small quantity of jb weld on a piece of cardboard and i've applied it to the inside of the housing once i press the glass in place i then cleaned the glass both sides using more methylated spirits and it is of course very important to clean off the jb weld before it sets i'm using 24 hour jb weld so there's no rush or stress to get it into position before it sets before the jb weld had set i reassembled the meter and then i sat it on top of the traction engine again on a piece of cloth upside down and left it there for 24 hours painting this traction engine is a bit like painting the fourth bridge it's so big relative to the stuff that i normally paint and it's taking ages and i'm still using a small brush because as i've said many many times small brushes leave small brush marks this is actually a slightly larger brush than i would normally use but i'm getting there slowly but surely unfortunately this is the last bit of paint i'm waiting for some more to arrive this morning some really good things arrived in the post this is a small bucket but it gets much better than that here's one of the original lamps which was fitted to the engine when Simon Hudson of the Steam Workshop previously sold the traction engine in 2017. This is a really lovely thing. It's even got the articulated fixing to move the position of the lamp. And I'm not going to do anything with the paintwork because it looks just right as it is. And today got even better because in the same package there was another one. A pair of them, one for each side of the smoke box. These lamps are great. The square piece of glass on the frame is on a latch and opens outwards so you can put a burner inside. And it gets even better. This is the tail light. All of the lamps are more or less identical, but as they're handmade, they're not perfect. But when I fit them to the showman's engine, as you'll see shortly, they look quite amazing. I even got a shovel, and this really important part that didn't come with the engine. I don't mean the round wire flue brush which is very good for cleaning the tubes and possibly not too good for treating hemorrhoids i mean the fancy brass part with the star in the center 
This part fits in between the two upright supports at the rear of the canopy. Also in the package was a broken eccentric. At some time I presume this was the water pump eccentric and it broke. It was welded and then broke on the other side. So the water pump on the eccentric, which is not painted, is a complete new one. Why did I get these in the post? What's going on? The piece of paper also lists some other parts that are missing. The parts were sent to me by the previous owner of this engine, who lives down in Devon, quite a long way from here. Even though he bought the engine from Simon at the Steam Workshop, he sold it to a dealer somewhere down near where he lives. The following comments were made to me by the previous owner of the engine. He told me that the dealer told him that the boiler was unserviceable. So in the end, he actually lost quite a lot of money on the engine. So he kept back some of the parts to try and reduce his loss. Simon bought the engine from this other dealer, and then I bought the engine from Simon, and everything's fine. There's nothing wrong with the boiler. It's just passed a four-year hydraulic test and a steam test. You may be wondering how I got these parts. As I didn't get any of the lamps with the engine, I was looking on eBay to see if I could find some. And to my surprise, I found all of these items. I contacted the seller, who was the previous owner of the engine, and phoned the steam workshop to find out what was going on. My thanks go to Simon Hudson, who also contacted the seller, and bought the parts from him. And here they are, back on the engine. I also received a nice pair of wooden chocks for the wheels, and this water lifter pipe. Simon's going to chase up some other parts that I need for the engine. Time will tell whether or not I can get these parts also. For me anyway, all's well that ends well. These lamps are beautiful. I mean, just look at this, it's like a real one. Well, it is a real one, just smaller. And having the ornate brass cross at the rear to match the one at the front is just a bonus. This was removed to make driving the engine easier, but I'm modifying the controls, so I should be able to drive it with this in place. We shall see. The engine's starting to look better and better on a daily basis. There's still quite a way to go, though. But for now, I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.